Welcome back to Joe's Computer Museum. Today we're going to install OS2 on this old IBM. Warm up the CRT, it's time for another episode. Ever heard of OS2? It's pretty obscure, but it played an important part of modern computing history. I'd never seen OS2 in the wild, and I wanted to play around with it. As a fortunate coincidence, I have a machine in my collection that was designed for and originally came with OS2, so it seemed like the perfect opportunity to see what it's about. But before we dig in, let's talk a bit about the machine we're going to install it on. This is the IBM PS2 Model 76. It sports an Intel 486 33MHz processor, 24MB of RAM, and a 2GB SCSI hard drive. It came from Ford Motor Corporation and had Windows 95 and an Ethernet card added to it. Judging by the grime on the keyboard, it came from a dealership. It's a neat part of my collection and complements my other original IBM hardware. Before I started with OS2, I wanted to preserve the contents of the hard drive. I figured the easiest way was to just replace it, and the best way to do that was a SCSI to flash memory solution. I'll touch on the process to get the SCSI to flash solution to work, but if you want to skip forward to OS2, just click this thing. The device I used is literally called a SCSI 2SD. It's a custom board that connects to the 50-pin internal ribbon cable of your system and emulates a SCSI hard drive. You use the downloadable utility to set the size of the partitions, update the firmware, and more. After that, you just pop in an SD card, hook it up to your system, and you're set. With this machine, however, we have a little problem, because its BIOS code lives on the hard drive. If you replace the drive, you'll find the machine magically stops working. You have to somehow transfer the code from the original drive to the new one. It took a bit of research to find out how to do it, but luckily IBM made this fairly easy. Pressing Ctrl-Alt-Insert during post with the original drive in the machine gets you into utilities that allow you to create special floppy disks. These disks are used to boot the machine and write the BIOS to a new drive. With that out of the way, the computer recognizes the SCSI to SD device and we're in business. Now let's get back to OS2. OS2 was originally developed jointly by Microsoft and IBM as a modern replacement for MS-DOS. Its name, short for Operating System 2, was a marketing tie-in to IBM's PC systems at the time, branded Personal System 2. OS2 used protected mode natively, unlike DOS, which nominally used real mode. This made OS2, in theory anyway, more reliable than DOS, with better support for modern hardware. That said, a primary driver during development was to ensure compatibility with DOS applications to take advantage of the sizable DOS software library. And at an API level, it mimics MS-DOS to facilitate this. As development of the OS continued, IBM and Microsoft had differing opinions of what the OS should be. In the end, they parted ways on the project. IBM continued to develop the OS2 line of operating systems, while Microsoft took their version, reworked it significantly, and came out with Windows NT, a series of operating systems that exist to this day. So whatever happened to OS2? Would you believe me if I told you it was still around? That's right, the old beast still exists. Despite its age, IBM only dropped official support in 2006 and still gives defect support for a fee. Because of its incredible reliability, it's running inside ATMs and embedded systems of all kinds. Supposedly, it even runs parts of the New York subway system. You can still get relatively modern versions in the form of Ecom Station and ArcaOS, two authorized systems based on OS2. How's that for longevity? Since this machine came with version 2.0, I installed that first. I also tried out OS2 Warp. Installing either version is pretty straightforward. You use the installation floppies to install version 2, and a boot floppy with CD to install Warp. You should be able to find these online. Here's a time lapse of the install of Warp, because the process is really rather boring. Now that we've done the install, let's take a look at both versions. Alright, so here we are booting up OS2 version 2.0, the version of OS2 that uh, this computer was theoretically designed to run. There's our pretty boot screen with the OS2 logo in multiple different colors. I always found it funny how when uh, these old loading screens they say please wait, they're like please don't get upset at us that this machine is insanely slow and takes forever to load. This guy takes a little while, but it's actually quite a bit faster than you might expect because we are loading from flash, so there's really no head weight. It's uh, pushing data as fast as the SCSI interface can push it. We have our mouse cursor here. 
Uh, neat to see that the mouse cursor is black with a white border instead of the other way around. My IBM really didn't want to do, uh, do, uh, do the Windows convention there. And uh, here is our, our entire operating system. It is pretty sparse. As you can see, the design is similar to the way Windows 3.1 works when it has uh, minimized windows. As a matter of fact, you can even see that here. Um, the uh, system is set up so that uh, you've got like the OS2 system here, uh, which is similar to, I guess you would call it kind of like the program manager, so you can go in and see the applications that are on the machine. Um, you've got the shredder here, which is uh, somewhat analogous to, uh, uh, oh, I don't know, kind of analogous to the trash or the recycle bin on other operating systems. Go ahead and close that. And uh, help is built in, obviously, because you're going to need it to figure out this operating system because it is a little bit weird. It's a little different. It's easy enough to get around if you just think for a minute. You've got your window controls up here, which are a little bit different. They're uh, similar to what you might see in other operating systems, but the, the, the glyphs are different. You've got your close menu in the upper left, again, similar to Windows 3.1. Heck, it even looks like a Windows 3.1 uh, 3.1 um, menu. It's using the, uh, the standard uh, uh, Windows font there and everything. Hit close there and it closes it out. Um, that's really all there is to it. You know, if you have your applications installed, they're going to be in here. You'll have an icon on the desktop here. Um, let's see what a minimized window looks like. Double click that. And it doesn't look like that at all. Um, so, yeah, even I'm having problems figuring out how this is supposed to work exactly. But that's fine. Close that. And uh, that's really all there is to OS 2.2.0. It's pretty flat. And when you want to shut this down, it's the funniest thing. There is no user interface here at all to help you figure out how to shut it down. You have to right click in the middle of the screen here and select shut down. Um, and then hit OK. You gotta love this message too. Are you sure you want to close everything? Select OK to continue shutdown. Select cancel to end this task. Good on you IBM for being super official and formal there. So we'll go ahead and click OK and uh, end our OS2 2.0 session. Please wait. Shutdown still in progress. Do not touch that power button. Oh my gosh, you might break it or something. And now there it is, ready to be shut off. So now let's take a look at OS2 4.0 Warp. All right, so let's uh, load up OS2 4.0 Warp. You can see the uh, boot screen's a little bit different. And uh, <laughs> there's our OS2 Warp uh, boot screen. Uh, beautiful Bezier curve on the font they got there, just the tip top of the mid-90s technology. Um, so this is going to take a little while to load because this poor old computer's slow, but we'll bear with it. All right, now we're loading up the desktop. Gotta love that waiting cursor. It's an entire clock. None of this watch or hourglass stuff for IBM. No, no, we gotta go with the full wall clock that looks like a monitor. Whatever. IBM was really never known for their... Uh, striking industrial design. They just basically made stuff that worked. So this will take a little bit to load up here. Cue the uh, Jeopardy music in the background while we're waiting, I guess. There we go. Desktop background and icons and everything. So this is OS 2 4.0 warp as they call it. Uh, all your standard icons and stuff there. So let's take a quick, uh, quick look at this. Uh, first major thing is uh, the OS2 Warp uh, menu up here. This is uh, arranged kind of like the uh, Windows Start menu a little bit. You got uh, certain applications that have their own uh, hot menus here. Uh, programs shows your program list. OS2 system. You can kind of think of this a little bit like the control panel but not exactly connections will show you connections to your different devices and assistance center is your help 
Um, this up here, I guess you would consider it the taskbar, although it doesn't really function that way. It's more of a shortcut bar that uh, has links to everything that's already on this menu, again, for whatever reason. Um, this was more geared towards your power users, although, you know, everyday users might get some use out of this. They're not really going to be looking uh, looking for all the, the stuff on here. They really don't care. Um, this shows, you know, your your drive and your CPU usage and all that. A couple weird little things uh, about the uh, the way this works um, as far as user interface paradigm. Uh, let's uh, let's open up an application here. Um, we'll open up this. Uh, user interface looks kind of similar to I don't know. Windows NT4 or uh, Windows 95 a little bit. Uh, you have uh, the icons here or the uh, the con uh, controls here are a little bit different. Uh, this menu <laughs> still looks like a Windows 3.5 menu. Um, and moving icons around on the desktop is really weird. You gotta like right click it and select pickup and then you get this this briefcase thing and then you click where you want it to go um, and you uh, hit drop here and moves it. It's weird. You can't like drag and drop icons. It's really, really funky. Um, of course, comes with Netscape Navigator pre-installed or the get thing for it. Uh, and then Web Explorer, which is IBM's, uh, IBM's browser. Now, I couldn't get the uh, Ethernet card to work on this, so I can't really browse the web with it. But apparently, you can get a relatively up-to-date version of Firefox. You can actually surf the web on this thing, which is kind of amazing. Um, to uh, shut this one down, it's a little bit easier than uh, OS2 version 2. We have a dedicated button for that, so we just click that there. Are you sure you want to shut it down? We hit yes, and it shuts down. Pretty easy. Well, that's OS, uh, OS2 4.0 warp in a nutshell. OS2 is pretty nifty and had a great deal of promise to be the operating system of the future, but Microsoft's keen marketing and business sense put a kibosh on that, and today Windows reigns supreme. But under the hood of any modern Windows machine is a little bit of the soul of OS2, so in a way it lives on. Well that's all for today's video. While you're here, check out some of my other videos, and remember, 8 bits are all you need.